Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is October the 2nd, 2024. Let's talk football, week five of the NFL. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also point out, too, that for sophisticated gamblers, I strongly recommend the futures market over the week-to-week -week market. Let me also point out uh, just a brief update on where I stand on some plays. Um, Cleveland, I still believe, is talent-laden, but I'm laying off of them. They've disappointed me this year. The Redskins, I know it sounded preposterous, right? They were going off at 100-1 to 1 to win the whole thing last week. Uh, Jaden Daniels, if you don't know, folks, he's damn near close to a Pro Bowl-level quarterback, right? The Commanders don't have any defense whatsoever. I'll agree with that. It's unlikely that they are going to win the Super Bowl. I'm just hoping they make it into late November at favorable odds, right? Well, understand, they were 100-1 to last week. This week, they're 50-1. to that's how fast the odds move in the futures market. So let's roll into this week's picks. The Dallas Cowboys are playing the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. I like the Steelers laying two and a half points. Tomlin's defense, folks, is playing excellent football. The Cowboys, although I believe they're talent laden, just like I believe the Cleveland Browns are, uh, their problems at running back seem to hurt them. Their defense isn't completely clicking. Now Micah Parsons, of course, is out. Uh, the Cleveland Browns at the Washington Commanders, I like the over 44. Right, folks? As I said earlier, Washington has no defense, and believe it or not, the offense is averaging 30 points a game. Right, I think both teams are going to be able to take shots downfield. The 44 over-under is a bit low. I like the over 44 in that matchup. Next, the Buffalo Bills are at the Houston Texans. Folks, believe it or not, both teams have pretty good defenses. Right, Particularly with Houston, the defense is actually carrying the offense. I like the under 47 and a half. That's a high over-under for a game like this involving two teams with pretty good defenses. I also uh, threw money on Jaden Daniels. Folks, this week's really the last week you're going to be able to get these odds. Uh, for him to be Offensive Rookie of the Year, you're getting a minus 150, less than even money. Now, the big question, don't, you know, use the mortgage money for this bet because the big question is whether Daniels, who is a running quarterback, gets hurt, right? If he gets hurt, you have other people out there, right? Marvin Harrison Jr., for example, who might leapfrog him. But if he stays healthy, folks, I've seen enough where I understand this guy is far and away the best quarterback coming out of this class at least early in his career. Uh, more importantly, the way they have the offense structured, he's going to put up above average numbers, right? Think about, too, the politics of the award. You know, certain teams have a great pipeline to college players. The commanders have had terrible drafts the last few years, Right, So with a team like this where you have a new ownership and there's a new effort to um, you know, kind of put the team in the forefront, um, if Jaden Daniels continues to play like he's been playing, he's going to be your offensive rookie of the year. Right, Even though you're getting less than even money odds, folks, he's an overwhelming favorite for that. Let's also shift gears a little bit. And let's talk about the MVP of the league. Uh, believe it or not, Brock Purdy at plus 1,400 is one of the best deals uh, in the space. Um, 
you know, for political reasons, Lamar Jackson, who already has two MVPs, there's going to be some hesitancy in giving him a third, right? That's just the way it is, folks. Uh, folks want to spread the wealth. I understand Aaron Rodgers has four MVPs. I understand there are guys out there who have a lot of MVPs. Um, just understand Lamar Jackson is a little bit on the young side to pick up another MVP. Um, I would say the 49ers have an easier run of it. I know they've been struggling. I know they've had a lot of injuries. Understand, Christian McCaffrey is out, but his backup is magnificent. Understand, the Niner defense is playing great ball. They've given away some games, right? The point is, if they right the ship, Believe it or not, Brock Purdy, who would have been, in my opinion, your MVP last year, but for that Christmas game against Lamar and Baltimore, right? The Niners were the one seed in the NFC. Uh, Purdy was the bigger surprise than Lamar. They went head to head. The Niners were playing at home and Purdy threw picks, gave away the MVP award. Well, just to understand, Purdy this year, you're getting him now, four weeks into the season, at a plus 1,400. And I'm just telling you, this guy is one of the very best quarterbacks in the league, right? He has the quarterback whisperer as his head coach, Kyle Shanahan. He has ridiculous weapons on offense, right? Folks, he's doing this with McCaffrey out. <laughs> right? You have Brandon Ayuk, a $120 million receiver. You have Debo Samuel, who's one of the best open field runners in the entire league. Right? I think, um, you know, Purdy, how do you put it, 14-1 to 1 is a great play here after week four. Let's talk about some other uh, bets I made here. Okay, those are the football plays. Let's go over them. Um, let me also name another one. Rashi Rice is out, folks. Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes are doing it with smoke and mirrors. Right? Understand. Um, they are not in the top seven in terms of total DVOA. Right? They're doing it with smoke and mirrors. Now you have the Saints, who of course destroyed the Cowboys and who have the enigmatic Alvin Kamara. Right? Understand too, the Saints have one of the league's best defenses this year. Right? They have statistically a much better defense this year than the Kansas City Chiefs. KC is laying six and a half, excuse me, five and a half points. I like the Saints, plus five and a half against the Kansas City Chiefs. So to sum up, I like the Saints, plus five and a half. I like the Steelers laying two and a half. Um, let me name another game. You heard me talk about Brock Purdy. Right, folks, Arizona has no defense. Right? They have no defense. I know the Niners haven't quite been playing up to capability. But understand, the preseason involved Brandon Ayuk not playing because he wanted a big contract. Right? The Niners are getting closer. Their numbers aren't that bad. I like San Francisco laying seven and a half. Be aware of the hook. I like San Fran laying seven and a half against their divisional rival, the Arizona Cardinals. That game, by the way, is in San Francisco, right? So I like the Steelers laying two and a half. I like San Francisco laying seven and a half. I like the over 44 in the Cleveland Brown versus Washington Commander game. I like the under 47 and a half in the Buffalo Bills uh, at Houston game uh, and longer term plays. I like Jaden Daniels at a minus 150 to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. 
I also like Brock Purdy at a plus 1400 to win MVP, right? You know where I stand too in terms of team ranking. I know right now everyone is gaga over the Vikings. Okay, great. You know, I believe the best team in football right now are the San Francisco 49ers, right? Not the Baltimore Ravens, but San Francisco. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.